Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Todd Taylor, and welcome to Tendon Talk Tonight. Tonight's top story, I mean topic, why does nobody watch this news program? Second on the docket, though, itis, osis, or opathy. What kind of tendon turbulence has you tense? Live on the scene, we have Ted Thomas. How's it going down there, Ted? Well, Todd, I'm standing out here beside this tree that you told me to stand beside, and I just realized this is a hairbrush. Thanks, Ted. We appreciate your work. Who is this show for? Hey, everybody. You're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. In today's video, we're going to be talking tendons, specifically tendonitis, tendinosis, as well as tendinopathy. I'm going to be breaking down what they are, what makes them similar, as well as what makes them different from one another. Let's get started, shall we? I think it's important first to lay the groundwork for what a tendon is, since all of the terms that we're going to be talking about refer to the structure of a tendon. A tendon is a fibrous connective tissue that attaches muscle to bone. This makes them really important then because muscles are responsible for how we move. But if they don't have that tendon connective tissue attaching them to the bones, they can't pull on the bones to create movement. Let's use the biceps muscle as a quick example. This is the biceps muscle itself, and these are the bones that it attaches to. What connects the muscle to the bone, that connective tissue there, those are the tendons. If the tendons weren't there, the muscle would not be attached to the bone and thus unable to do its job. This makes tendons really important for human movements. All right, so that was a quick rundown of what a tendon is. Now let's get into our first tendon-related word of the day. Tendonitis is an acute inflammation of a tendon, which is caused by stretching or straining of the tendon fibers. Let's examine where this name comes from. Tendon, for the structure that's involved, and the ending itis here refers to the presence of inflammation. Bang, bang, boom, put them together, you've got tendonitis. The important thing to remember here is that tendonitis is an acute or short-term diagnosis. There's something specific that caused stretching or strain to the tendon, resulting in inflammation. Picture a weekend where you play six softball games in a row, spend a lot of time throwing, and then have a sore shoulder afterwards. This is a distinct event or series of events in a short term that cause inflammation or irritation to a tendon because of how much it was required to do. This then stands in contrast to Tendinosis is a buildup of small tears within a tendon over time. With inadequate healing in between bouts of tearing, degeneration of the tendon happens over time. Let's look at where that name comes from. Tendon, once again, comes from the word tendon, and osis is an ending which often refers to disorders or abnormal states. So then, tendinosis literally means a tendon in a disordered or abnormal state. Practically though, when you hear tendinosis, think long term. This is an injury or irritation that has built up with repetitive small tearing over an extended period of time. Let's use an example somebody's Achilles tendon or the big tendon at the back of your heel. Over years of walking, that tendon could get irritated or have small tears happen repetitively. Since we're human beings and we walk fairly often, the tendon may not be able to fully repair itself or rest in between bouts of small tearing. This leads to the breakdown of the tendon over time. To summarize what we've gone through so far, tendonitis is an acute short-term inflammation of a tendon, while tendinosis is repetitive long-term breakdown of a tendon, again, over time. What then is tendinopathy? Anything bad that happens to a tendon. <laughs> Some professionals use this in reference to more long-term situations than others, but practically I've found thus far that tendinopathy essentially refers to any disorder or change within the tendon. Back to the word building graphics, I'm not going to bother telling you where tendon comes from again in this one, but the ending opathy generally just refers to a disease or disorder. Put those together and tendinopathy is a disease or disorder within a tendon. Not to be confused, obviously, with tendinosis being a tendon in a disordered or abnormal state. And it is really easy to see why this can get confusing, so I'm going to do my best to straighten it out right here. 
Basically, tendinopathy refers to anything bad that could happen to a tendon. This means that it is the umbrella term that could be referring to either tendinitis or tendinosis. This means that the name is not specific, and when you use tendinopathy, often you could be referring to a short-term irritation, like tendinitis, or a long-term irritation, like tendinosis. Hopefully this graphic helps show that the word tendinopathy, again, is the umbrella term, which could be referring to either tendinitis, that short-term inflammation, or tendinosis, the long-term breakdown. Just to clarify one thing here, which you may have picked up on already, tendinitis, because it is short-term, if it occurs over a long period of time, will result in tendinosis. This creates a fun little triangle effect on the graphic here. Really hoping that makes a lot of sense, because I think we're just about done here for today. Okay, I really don't want to muddy the waters too much, but tenosynovitis is a word that you may come across in your travels with the healthcare system, and it does refer to tendons. So let's do one last word building graphic for the day. There's no tendon in this one, however, teno, the start, is where we get our contribution from the word tendon. The middle part, seno, refers to a synovial sheath. This is a covering that fits around some tendons in the body. The ending, itis, as you recall from earlier, comes from inflammation. Put it all together, and tenosynovitis is an inflammation of the synovial sheath surrounding a tendon. Practically, tenosynovitis and tendonitis are really, really similar in presentation as well as treatment, but I just wanted to bring this word up in case you ever come across it in your journeys with the medical system. I know this topic can be really confusing and the term tendonitis gets thrown around a lot, but I really hope today's video helped illuminate a little more of what the tendon itself is, as well as what all of these different words referring to a tendon mean. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a thumbs up below or subscribing to the channel for updates on upcoming videos. Either way helps out my channel a lot, so I appreciate your guys' support. Leave me a comment below if this video sparked any questions for you, or if you have a request for a future video topic that a physiotherapist could tackle. I do my best to stay on top of the comment section, so I'll try to get back to you relatively quickly. Most importantly though guys, as always, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video. Those hands. See you guys. <laughs>